This is how we ride. This is how we do. Uh, what trailer are we in? Rick Boom Briggs. <laughs> well, I, I guess I figured out the shirt. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, my God. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's all glass. That'll get us through tonight. Does he drink uh, aluminum cans or is he has it? Some heartburn. Can't do it. Oh, it's only the bottles. <laughs> uh, only, only the bottles. Oh my gosh! Dirt track racing, ladies and gentlemen. And it isn't Folgers. They have a, a bonfire, and we have found two of the. You are responsible for Hudson O'Neill running so well. You know this is. <laughs> He's responsible for me running so good tonight. Oh my! God. Well, that's believable, but I mean, I don't know about the Hudson O'Neill part. Hudson O'Neill's the real deal. Is he the new deal or the real deal? He's the real deal. Might be both. Yeah. Is he good? Yeah, he's really good. He's really Here's good. Here's what a lot of people want to know. Is he better than Brandon Shepard? Uh, I don't know. He's That's a, a hard he's question. A, no. He's young. And we'll reiterate that when he's 29. Oh, come on. You have to. That's realistic. He's got Listen. seven years to go, man. But not a lot of people get to get into racing at a young age. They got to come with the last name or a lot of money. This is true. Sometimes if a guy has to work his way up, he ain't going to be recognized until he's 30 or 35. It's tough. That's true. It's a tough business. I mean, all we got to make... You got to take advantage of opportunities that you have, and you still have to have talent. You still have to drive. Well, but I, I'm a firm believer, and we got to make we got to make dirt racers great again. And when I say dirt racers great great again, regular people, it could take you ten years if you want to be a race car driver at 18. You got to work your ass off to build the wealth up to even be able to think about being on the racetrack. It's, track. Just, it's just true. It's it's just just it's, I know it's changed, but that's why I say it's changed. And this is what I'm going to tell you. As hard as this guy's worked for 50 years. Well, he's in a rare position to give guys opportunities. He is in a position to do that. But, like Hudson, I'll use Hudson for an example. When he lost his one ride, his girlfriend's dad bought him a car, and he was on the road by himself with a couple kids, working his butt off. We've got to get the younger generation in here that want to work right you can't just show up with a helmet you have to want to work i mean it, we're living in a troubled world right now where the younger generation thinks in the chinese balloon i'm not fucking <laughs> dealing with that chinese balloon i'm just i'm, I'm, I'm trying just to make you know, you're really we're, serious we're in, like max for instance right he he, he, he works he could be a badass we we need some younger generation kids to come in here that are willing to work and put the time in it and not just show up with a helmet. Well, and it's I, a lot of work. I agree. I just think that it takes about ten years of working to even think about being on this level. It takes that much time. Listen, it's, it does. It's, it's not easy anymore. We're not talking two or three tenths no more. We're talking a tenth, tenth and a half. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean. This guy right here has worked for 50 years in this sport, and you're not going to outwork him. Well, and, yeah, and I'm only 44. You're only 44? <laughs> oh, man. He's, I mean, I believe it. I mean, look at the hair. I mean, I'm kind of attracted. I just don't want to be. He's you not know. younger than me. He ain't younger than you. No. You're, you're what, 38? Yeah. Okay. Today. Right. So, sure. well, well, a lot of people were worried at the beginning of the year that Longhorn was just going to sweep the entire year, apparently. Listen, I already did my. Oh. Yeah interview with dirt on dirt and i'm going to tell you the same thing you're not going to outwork this man kevin rumley is this a call out no i'm not calling no, nobody out i'm, I'm not, just saying no, no, steve no, no, arpin no. ain't getting involved no 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 no. i'm not Listen, they, they build good cars they build Nobody's good cars. Saying no, they no 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 i, they I would say you don't longhorns are nice good, i mean they work everybody works in this sport it ain't about one or the other but they try to make it that way. You shouldn't make it that way. It's an equal look at what look at what Overton did in that Warrior. That was impressive. That, that was, was very impressive. Brandon Overton is a good race car driver. Brandon Overton works. Right. Lance Armstrong can win a, the Tour de France on a Walmart bike. I I'm mean, just saying, quit putting a divide in the the chassis business. Quit it. Quit doing it. I okay. mean, Mark works his ass off. Arpin has a very good business with Longhorn. 
he's working. Kevin Rumley's working. Nobody's here to divide this chassis. But they're, deal. well, I don't think they're looking to divide. They're looking at the competition element of it. Well, they're not necessarily look, look. saying, like, let's divide the sport. They're saying, let's have the Longhorn versus, okay. versus the Sooners. You know, I mean, the, the, all right, listen. Okay, you want to let's have it. a Super Bowl, you know? Listen, I got a little bit lucky tonight with some flat tires. But because of Mark Richards, I had a competitive car. I'm going to be 52 years old. I don't belong up on the cushion. You know why I could go up on that cushion? Because of Mark Richards. So I don't want to hear this chassis bullshit. Well, Everybody I mean, it's just what people race. say. I, I mean, don't care what people say. Well, they want a battle. They want a competition, not just on the track with the drivers, but they want competition with the chassis Listen, builders, too. I'm just telling you, if you show up and you are willing to work hard, I don't. If it's a rocket, it's a Longhorn, a Warrior. I mean, warrior whatever it is. Over to the Legacy car. chassis Listen, look very nice. Dale McDowell, Bloomquist car. Dale McDowell is a good racer. His brother Shane works hard. Right. You got to show up and work hard. Do you not? You have to show up and work hard. Well, but I'm just saying, with you being ahead of a manufacturer, obviously people are they're they're well, proclaiming well, certain things. Is there certain? advantages on a bigger track versus a shorter track because Longhorn did perform very well at Golden Isle all tech uh, rockets right there with them I'm not saying I'm not demeaning the chassis manufacturing process you know, they got, it is they got it, some really good teams and I think it's more about you know the team structure itself you know what I'm saying their team and, they have and well funded they have good riders well funded. Yeah. It, you know I got a friend of mine who says you know it takes money well-funded team it takes a good driver and it takes somebody to put all that together. Right. And that's the crew. You know, so you miss any one of them, you're done. Right. So, you know, uh, some teams don't have the money that other teams have. Some teams don't have the crew that other teams have. Some teams may not have the driver that everybody has. Not all drivers are equal. Not all crews are equal. So, you know, it's, it's just a matter of you know who's got it all together at the time well and, and it's interesting like max blair you know come from pa it's yeah. kind of they got a different couple of manufacturers up there bobby pierce was kind of a guy who a lot of people saw a lot of talent they're running kind of a oblong kind of chassis with a pierce chassis do y'all yeah, see bob you, was bob's a hard worker bob oh is, i agree bob I'm, not, great, I'm not disagreeing driver and they got you know supporters behind him they got sponsorship well, and, you know, the thing is, Bobby's been very competitive over the years in them cars. So, you know, uh, is that everybody a makes too much out of this. And, you know, uh, if you really know all the situations, you kind of know the differences. Well, and I think that what people do is they make it a NASCAR scenario, if that makes any sense. They make that's it like Toyota versus that Chevy. Is, yeah, they make the they make a rocket now. via the whole a Ford. Now and it's become too much like NASCAR. Yeah. We, need okay. to get, we need to get back to dirt racing and dirt routes. We don't need, you know, we got a lot of TV money involved now. That streaming, technically. Okay, streaming. <laughs> but, purses, <laughs> but purses as well. You know, the more the money goes up, the more the cost goes up. Yes. And anything. Right. You know, so it's getting to where it's getting to be too much cost for the average guy you were talking about mm -hmm. a while ago for right. him to come into it because it costs so much well, to, and, and to, to do it. I mean, you know, when you're spending five or $6,000 a night to race, mm -hmm. and, not everybody can do that. No, and then we're out here racing for 5000 Well, I mean, that's a whole other subject, the, right? That's a whole other subject, right? Up, there's 50 some cars here, right? Mm -hmm. Each one of these trucks, not each one of them, but the majority of the trucks have over a million dollars worth of truck and equipment. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, completely. So you yes. got twenty-five to thirty million dollars probably mm -hmm. after you average in the pits. Out, in, the the average, pits. in the pits. In the pits. We're sitting here racing for five thousand to win. It, it don't make a lot of sense, does it? No, listen. I mean, I'm not. I'm, well, it, it's a it's a, it's a situation where they're trying to do five what? nights in a row and they're trying well, to make it logical their situation I mean, is like tonight they're to defend them a little bit they're trying to get everybody a paycheck right okay this is not the fault of the promoters this is the fault of society okay you know? yeah, i agree I, i'm That's, listening yeah. because i really think that you know uh 
People want to win so bad that they're willing to spend whatever. Ego. You're saying it's ego based. No, not well, really I don't ego. think it's I mean, ego. I don't no. think it's ego. What wants to win, it's though? It's competition. It's competition. And, but isn't the ego in, what feeds you know, on back competition? Back in the day, 20 years ago, when the World of Outlaws started, it was driver owned teams. Right. How, how many, Owner operators. How many drivers owned teams? Ain't too many. Yeah. Ain't too many left. Ain't too many. And that was the difference today that what it was 20 years ago. And 20 years ago, uh, you know, we Bloomquist showed up in his stuff well, and he Scott built Blumquist the car. And, and I actually helped get the world of outlaws started. Well, because we y'all were y'all were headlines of the situation. But we helped get it started because and Goodyear thing, was and coming in. Was and the thing was, all them teams, the drivers pretty much were involved either owning the car completely or partially. partially. Right. You ain't gonna find drivers here that own anything. They get the percentage. And the sport's changed. It's just tough for a guy to come into it. And the money's gotten to be so much that there's more money spent after more money. You know what I'm saying? Well, what is the, I don't want to say cream of the crop, but what is the allure then to be a dominant late model operation at all? If, it, if you're not owning it and operating it, it's not for the necessarily the dollar bills that you're going to personally make. What is the reason? That's the best word. What is the reason you would want to come and be a, a I mean, top? It's, it's the quest of competition, you know. People it's the quest of to succeed. Yeah, right. It, it's it to win. And it used to be there was never people with money. You know, the, like Chubb Frank, for instance. We'll use Chubb. Mm -hmm. That's Boom's. You know, that's a PA boy. Yeah, I mean, my cousin. Oh, yeah. no, it is. Oh, yeah, no, Joe's my cousin. Boom All used to stuff. ride up and down the road yes. in, a, in a suburban with an open trailer. Lived in the back of that suburban many nights at my shop. He lived yes. out the, out in the parking rough lot. in it. Rough Chubb in roughed it. it. Chubb and roughed it. Kind of like me with it. You know, <laughs> yeah. he he was a real grassroots type racer that didn't have a lot of money. He made it off of his earnings. There's not many teams today that can make it off of their earnings. But y'all are doing way better in the late model world than the sprint car world is. I mean, that's a whole nother okay. level of, okay, like, but, not making it. I mean, y'all yeah, are, are technically... That's based all on sponsorship yeah, money, which is no right, different that's, than that's, here. That's, There's money coming from somewhere besides yes. what you're earning on the racetrack. And what happened to NASCAR years ago, those teams... They sold out. Well, those teams made a lot of their money years and years ago off the purse well then when they got corporate involved right that's when the sport really changed because they had corporate money and, now, and then the purse money didn't mean anything and and we're almost to that point where the purse right. money the purse money is good for the drivers but it's not good for the teams. it's not enough for the teams well then well, that's why i would say well the, the sprint car people envy this situation i understand I mean, but the sprint car people somehow still attract national... Get, but that's because they're NASCAR. To, they're controlled by co corporational sponsorship. Well, they get corporate money. They get and corporate most of them, money. That's most right. of them teams are fully sponsored before they start racing. Right. Yes. They're, they're funded the to money doesn't compete. mean anything. Right, right. At that point, yeah. They're, they're but 90. then it's controlled by something more than the driver and the owner. It, and it, 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 it's an outside entity that's controlling yeah, their this, dictation. This late model pit area, 90% of the people... Oh, do not have the funding that the sprint cars do. The sprint cars they don't got, have the spot. They so, got funding, but the so funding they don't have comes, the sponsorship. The funding comes from from companies that's involved with the team, or or you know is helping multiple people's putting money into the team. Where sprint cars, they get a a big sponsor. They get a check right off the bat. They get yeah. a check. They right got a, a Roth cattle company <laughs> putting a team on a race. Yeah, you got to remember too. Back in the Ted Johnson days, the sprint cars got on We're TV. More, got on TV way sooner than the late models. Well, I would say that sprint cars in the '90s is late models of today. It was kind of a mixture of sponsorship, but more so they were racing for the money as well. Whereas now, sprint car racing is more like NASCAR, where it's a sponsor dictated sport. And y'all have that sprint car opportunity to still halfway race for what it actually pays to operate. 
you halfway have the opportunity. Not everyone's going to be Jonathan Davenport, but there no, are a few no. people that can make you. You still have somewhat the opportunity to race for it. You have your independency because once the corporations get involved, your independency is gone. It, That's it, what that, it, exactly. It, no, That's the problem. It is, it is I don't gone. know. I've got. I've been sponsored by a corporation now for almost 22 years. Valvoline is down the street. They don't got nobody else. No, I'm just playing. No, but, <laughs> I'm just saying. But you know what but I'm he's saying. Got, he's got a real... I know what you're saying. He's got a long 22 term. years. It's how you, you know, your relationship with that sponsorship is and, and how you treat that sponsorship. You know, uh, Valvoline has been a great sponsor for us and, you know, uh, they don't dictate our, you know, our life so much. But I know what you mean. Like, right. You so this, this is the, and this is why I say I'm, I'm getting involved with late mall racing not only because the, the competition, sprint car racing right now. There's maybe six guys. You know who's gonna win. Right now, y'all got a legitimate 25, who could I literally agree. win a race tonight. I agree. But that is where that sweet spot sprint car racing was in the 90s. And y'all are in that, once you go down that corporate road, it's hard to say no to the dollar bill. It really is hard to say no. And y'all are, I think y'all are in that moment where the dollar is going to come and you either say yes or no. And it's like, who's going to all bite the bullet, you know? And you're, you're, you're a very important person in that segment, not because you're Joe Gibbs, but in the ideology of what people view this sport as. You are a Joe Gibbs. You are a rocket chassis. You are a manufacturer of some of the race, best race cars on the racetrack. Forget That's about, just what it is. Forget about the manufacturers. He's the, the manufacturer, the mind, the, the ideology. It, it, it's, all, it's, it's, all it's a it. team. It's but a team. He's been a crew chief for 40 years. All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Chief for 40 years. Are you going to validate? In, Are you going to validate? In the sport for 50. Is he lying? Well, I've been chief since I was 13 or 14, yes. 15. But, and here's the thing. I was really crew chief when I was 19. That's yes. When, that's what I'm Okay. But, that's a long time ago. Tell me about it. I'm saying yeah. you're 40 years old, so it was like yeah. 30, 30 or 20 uh, years ago, right? Yeah, or, it was yeah 2002, yeah. you know, I mean. He's That's crazy. Still, 2003. Yeah, still, he, listen to me. He's still older than me. Oh, come on. This is how we ride. This is how we do. Riding must lighten up.